Here's a screencast I think you've been waiting for. How do I add images to an HTML page? It's not that hard. It's actually pretty easy. Um, but there's quite of a few steps involved. And you, it also sort of breaks our rule about the tags coming in pairs. But don't worry about it. I'm going to walk you through it right now. The first thing, before we even talk about code, we need to talk about the image files themselves. Um, I, and, and this is where this course isn't a graphic design course. So I'm going to try to keep the technical stuff about graphics to a minimum. But there is one thing I need to tell you. Um, the types of image files you use actually matters. Because web browsers can only display three types of images. OK, and those images are either JPEGs, um, GIFs or, or GIFs, however you want to say it. That's G-I-F. Um, and recently, this is a fairly new thing, but what's called pings or PNG graphics. Um, those are the only kinds. Like all the other kinds, uh, they, there's not consistently supported across browsers. So you need to restrict yourself to only using those three types of graphics when you are putting images on your website. Um, how to convert graphics from one format to another is kind of outside the scope of this particular tutorial series. Um, hopefully I'll, I'll have a chance or, or to, to create some screencasts about that in the future. Um, but you know what? Google is your friend. So if you find yourself in a bind and you're trying to change the format of, of images to something that a browser to either to changing it to one of, of JPEG, GIF, or PNGs, um, just do Google search. And there's lots of great information on the web on how to do that. And you don't even need, you know, the standard tools or Photoshop to do that. Uh, but you don't even even need Photoshop. There's free tools out there that will help you do that too. Um, but I'm going to move forward with the assumption that you've got uh, an image that you want to put on your website. Um, I've got a JPEG uh, right here. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and open it up and show you what it is. It's just a real plain, you know, it's a square uh, image. It's just a generic concert footage image here. And I want to put this at um, at the top of my website. Um, and, um, and so well, where do we put this? Okay, so what we need to do is we need to put this website. Remember that images folder that we created here? We need to put that, not website, did I say website? Put this image inside this images folder because any images that you want to have on your website needs to be in the images folder. So I've just moved it there. Um, so there we go. So inside here now we've got some more information in our, our more, more content in our coming soon folder. We have that index.html file that we've been working on. Style.css is still there. We haven't even touched that yet, but don't worry about it. We'll be, we'll be getting to that soon. And now inside this folder, we now have the concert.jpg uh, um, image. And it's important that it be inside this image folder, right inside there. Um, all images that we're, we're going to use from now on are going to go inside this image folder. So there we go. So we've got the image in the right place. Now let's talk about the code. Let's go to Text Wrangler, and I'm going to introduce you to the image tag. Um, but from what you know about, and the image tag is just IMG, and from what you know about image tag, you probably expected it to look like that, didn't you? Wow, wow. It doesn't look like that, unfortunately. This is one of those weird tags that kind of breaks the rules a bit. Um, but when you think about it, it kind of makes sense why it breaks the rules. So let me explain this to you. Um, the image tag actually looks like this. Okay, there's image, there's a space, and then there's a backslash. And this is what's called a self-closing tag. Um, it's a special type of tag that closes itself. And and you would write inside here, we're going to add some attributes that tell the computer where to find this image and how big it is and what it's what the content is and all that sort of stuff. So we're going to be adding some attribute value pairs in a second. Um, but when you think about it, when you when you stop to think about this, it actually makes sense, right? Because what are you going to put in here? Right? You, you don't need any, any text inside here. Images are just images. There's, there's not, you're not actually marking up any text. You're just plopping an image right on your page. So in this sense, even though it sort of breaks our rule about tags coming in pa pairs, it doesn't really, right? Like it makes sense that it would break this rule because you're not, you're not affecting. This isn't the type of tag that you use to affect or, or mark up any text. It's, it's sort of its own thing. I hope that makes sense. Anyways, let's move on to the attributes. There are tons of different attributes you can add to this, but there's there's some that are essential. There's actually four that are mandatory. I know, and uh, you're thinking, oh my gosh, I just you just told me about attributes, and now you're telling me this is going to have four attributes, and yeah, um, there's going to be four mandatory attribute value pairs, 
don't let it throw you because we're just going to go through them one at a time. And oh, by the way, it doesn't matter what order you put these in. It's just that when you see code written out, it's almost always written in a certain order. So I'm going to approach it that way. But the computer doesn't care what order you write this code in. Um, so the first um, attribute value pair, it's called SRC. And SRC stands for source. And what you're doing is you're telling this tag, you're telling the browser, where, what is the source of the image? Where, where is the image located relative to this index.html file? Because this, we're talking about a file. We're talking about a computer file, right? And index.html is a computer file. It's just a plain text file. And we need to tell the browser where to find this particular image relative to the current page that it's reading. Okay. If you're not familiar with relative addresses when it comes to computers and, and things like that, you know, it's okay. You can just copy this out and it's, it'll work. Um, but I really recommend that you start to get familiar with this concept of relative addressing because it's, it's something that's really useful in the long run. So we're going to go source. And again, the syntax is equals and the value is going to go inside these quotation marks. And this is where I'm going to put the source for like the loca the the source for the image. This is I'm going to write where the file, the image file is located relative to index.html. And then I'm also going to write the name of the file. And this is a relative address and what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it that it's in the images folder, right? I don't have to tell it where else to go because it's relative to the to the index.html file. And and the name of the file, let's actually go back and check. Okay inside here, concert.jpg. Okay, so I'm going to type concert.jpg. There we go. And that's going to tell it to, to say, look in the same directory that we're currently located. We're, we're, we know that index.html, we're in a certain place in the universe. And the web browser is going to look in that same directory for a folder called images. And then it's going to open that folder. And then it's going to look for a file called concert.jpg. That's all I mean by relative addressing. OK, um, if you had a folder within a folder, then you would have to say, you know, another folder. You'd have to put the other folder there. But that's probably not a good idea. So there we go. So we've told the browser where to find this file, uh, but we're not done yet. OK, you might think you're done, but you're not. There's a couple. There's three more really, really important uh, attribute value pairs that you need to include. You must include this. Um, the first one is we need to actually tell the browser the size of the picture. And we need to give that, that information in pixels. Um, and the way that we do this is the attributes. Nice, the nice thing is this is actually just an English word <laughs> width. Oh, but it would be better if I could spell it. Equals, and I'll put the whatever the size will be inside here. And then height equals. And uh, and so we need to include in here the width and height in, in pixels. And you might be saying, OK, well, where do I find that information? There's a couple different ways to do this. Um, if you're on a Mac, you can do control a command I, and that will open up the information page. And here to see all these, you, there's a whole bunch of information here about this particular file, concert.jpg. If you click on more info, you see that the dimensions in this case are 220 by 220. Um, I forget whether it's height first and then width. Well. It's it's moot in this case because it's a square image. If it was a you know if it was a um, a vertical image, it would be obvious which one was the height and which one was the the width. So okay, this is easy. We get to, we know that they're 220 pixels, and these measurements are always in pixels. So I'm going to put 220, and I'm going to put right here 220. Um, and then finally, um, what's the fourth one? The fourth one is called Alt. And this is where you need to put some sort of description of what the image is. This must be an accurate description. And no, I mean, I'm not going to go to your house and, and like scream at you if you, you, you write an inaccurate description. Nobody is. It's just that, A, it's common courtesy. And B, for accessibility, it's a really, really good idea. Um, many people. You know, well, not many people. A lot of people, you know, it is possible um, that your image might not load for some reason. And in that case, you do want the description to be there so that people understand. Also, uh, you know, sighted people like us, we take for granted that everybody can see this stuff. But, you know, there's a lot of people who, you know, who um, are, are blind and have to use screen readers. So, you know, be considerate 
and write the correct information. On top of it, it's, it's just a good idea to have that, the correct information in there for, for, for well, just for a million different reasons. So I'm going to write a description of this. I'm just going to say something very, very simple like uh, concert scene. There we go. Okay, that's an accurate description. You wouldn't write something in there like, you know, if it was a picture of, if it was just that plain concert scene, you wouldn't write down Justin Bieber or something like that. Okay, don't be, don't be deceitful. Write something that's accurate. All right, um, and that's it. So let's hit save and let's look at what this looks like. I'm going to go ahead and hit reload, and there's my image right there. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Okay. So. Let's have a quick look here and let's talk about a couple things to watch out for. Um, this stuff right in here, hate to tell you, but uppercase, lowercase, it counts, okay? So if you happen to do a, a capital C, it's going to get screwed up. It might work in one case, but it's not going to work once you upload this to the to the server. Um, so you need to make sure this is case sensitive. So make absolutely sure that whatever the name of your, your image file is, let's go back to that, whatever the name is here, you copy it exactly, okay? Um, case sensitive and all. And here's the thing, if you've downloaded an image from the web and it's got a whole bunch of dashes and numbers and blah 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 and spaces and all that stuff like that, you want to rename that to something really simple. You want to rename that to something that's going to be simple to, t to type. You definitely don't want any spaces. It must be, um, there must not be any spaces in the name of your file. Um, so, and, and just for your own sanity's sake, rename the file to something that's going to be easy for you to type. Um, Next thing, you might be wondering, why the heck do I need to include these? Um, there's some very good reasons for that. Uh, again, if the image for some reason doesn't load, or if someone is surfing with their images turned off, okay, um, the if you know a lot of like this flows, all this text flows around this, and if you didn't indicate the the size, it's actually really going to mess up your layout. Okay, so at least if you indicate the size that the browser, even if it can't load the image, it sort of saves that place for the image. And so it's not going to screw up your layout. Um, another um, thing that people often ask me is, well, if I want to resize the image, like I think that image is a bit too small, could I just do this? Could I just change that to 150? You know, and that's a bad idea too. And the reason that's a bad idea is that you never want to ask the web browser to do the resizing. A, web browsers weren't really made for that. They can do it, but it's not a good idea. They're really, it's not what they were built for. So A, the resizing is not going to look nearly as good as if you properly resize your photo using, you know, a tool like Photoshop or any open source tool or something like that. Um, second, it actually is is kind of sucks from a usability perspective because you're you're asking the user to download more information than what they have to right because a 220 pixel by 220 pixel file is actually considerably bigger than a 150 pixel by 150 pixel file and so that's adding extra bandwidth you know, demands to the person's internet connection that they don't need because you you were never planning on displaying that photo big any, in the first place. And yeah, we might not care that much about bandwidth, but guess what? People who are surfing on mobile phones, they really care about bandwidth. Um, so you want to be considerate of that. Only, you know, make the file as big as you need it to be and then be accurate in your width and height description. So I'm going to put that back to 220. Um, and Last but not least, I'm going to talk about uh, what's this concept of called hot linking. Um, this technically could be, it doesn't have to be, this is what's called a relative address. It could also be what's called an absolute address. Um, this could be an absolute address, like let's say you found an image on the web and you wanted to put the full address to that image on the web, okay? That's a bad idea to do that because what's happening is that you're actually putting whoever is hosting that particular image um, on their server, you're in a sense by, by hot linking, linking that image, like taking the, the image that's stored on their server and then displaying it on your website, it's, it's kind of a little bit like stealing. It's kind of a little bit like stealing. I'm not talking about, you know, the copyright is a whole other ball of wax. I'm talking about you're kind of stealing a bit of their bandwidth by doing that, right? Because it's, it's, it's pulling the information from somebody else's server, but it's not displaying anything else from that person. It's just purely taking their bandwidth and then showing their image on your site. 
which is kind of uncool. All right. Um, if if you really want, if there's an image somewhere else and you you want to use it, download it to your computer and copy it. Okay. Um, now again, the copyright issue is a completely other issue. I'm not going to get into that. You know, but for example, let's say you were uh, you know looking at open source, you were looking at some images that people have given permission to reuse or Creative Commons licensed material. Then you know don't link to it on a different site. Make a copy of it, download it to your site. Uh, and store it locally. That's a much better idea. Um, I, I didn't really mean to go off onto too much of a tangent there, but but I did want to explain how hot linking bad, relative addresses good, um, having the accurate. Oh, look what I did. I went and wrote 200. I should have written 220. Oh, accuracy. There we go. Um, accurate width and height good, and then accurate alt tag good, and all of this is correct. And that's how you add images to websites. All right. Whew, that was a big one. All right. Well, that's it for this screencast. I hope that you found it informative. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.